Hi, this is Andrew Jones with Climate Interactive. And some of our colleagues have been asking us lately about the potential contribution of agricultural soil carbon sequestration to address climate change. And uh, we thought we would use our new simulator, En-ROADS, to run some scenarios to just test our thinking about under what conditions is it, does it make a difference? Is it significant with some of the words that have been used and debated? So check out some of our analysis using En-ROADS and go try it yourself at enroads.org. Some experiments in En-ROADS, uh, starting with the business as usual future that's been calibrated to six integrated assessment models version of the scenario called SSP2, a business as usual, that's a middle of the road scenario that leads greenhouse gas emissions to grow throughout the century leading to 4.1 degrees C. Over on the left are removals. How much is being removed from the atmosphere by a range of carbon dioxide removal techniques, one of which is ag soil carbon here in gold. The assumptions for those ag so the assumptions for agricultural soil carbon are under here, where we go to um, carbon dioxide removal maximum. And we calibrated this and set the ranges to fit well, the estimates from the Royal Society 2018 report called Greenhouse Gas Removal, where it said that they expected the minimum to about be about one gigaton a year, maximum up to 10. So we chose the middle point of 5.5, and there's 5.5 in the middle. And so what if we get that 5.5 uh, gigatons per year of CO2? That's what this lever over on the bottom right allows you to change. What you do is you hit detailed settings and scroll down to agricultural soil carbon. So what we're going to get, if we move that to 100%, will be a maximum of 5.5 gigatons a year with some loss every year as uh, some land that's in the best practices with low-till agriculture uh, leaves that designation and you lose some of the carbon that had been uh, stored. So here I am, I'm gonna increase it up and we're gonna watch uh, up here to 100%. I'll run it again and you can see um, as it turns on and off this level and by 2040 we get up to about 5.5 gigatons per year of removals. Where that shows up in the model is here with that, see that area at below zero, that silver area, are the removals, which go up to about five, again, gigatons of CO2 per year, pulling that much out of the atmosphere. So what you have is everything above the zero line going in from land use CO2, this black area of energy CO2, F gases, methane, N2O coming out, those are the removals, five gigatons a year, and then declining over time. The result is about 0.1 degree, reducing temperature from 4.1 to 4.0. Um, we could also explore cumulative uh, CO2 removed. would be another way to look at it. So if we were to go here to CO2 emissions, net CO2 emissions, we could see what is the difference in cumulative net CO2 emissions for making that change. So the impact is about 0.1 one degree. If, however, this assumption were higher, if it was the high end of the Royal Society, and we go down here to carbon dioxide removal maximum, and it was pushed up to 10, you see the difference there between 5 and 10, brings temperature down to 3.9. There are other uncertainties, such as the loss. What if that egg soil carbon loss isn't 1% uh, a year, but a little bit less. You notice the different shape that you get if it's only 0.3. And so there we are at uh, bringing a change of 0 0.2. Um, that is uh, perhaps 10% of the way between 4.1 and uh, getting to two degrees. Um, you can debate all you like whether that's significant or not, but when you see what it takes to address climate change, there's no silver bullet. There's no one thing that's going to solve this problem. Even when you supplement that 
with a variety of other actions, such as incurring gene renewables, which helps another 0.2, and energy efficiency transport is another 0.2, and buildings and industry, well, that's another 0.3. Electrification gets us another 0.1. Electrification here, another 0.1 or so. Deforestation, another 0.1. Methane and other, a little bigger, depending on how much you get of it. Growing trees, we're at 2.4. Setting a carbon price and keeping coal in the ground, you can see that it really takes many actions, many of which bring 0.1 or 0.2 uh, reductions in temperature by 2100, put them all together and they could be part of a scenario that limits warming to well below two degrees. Uh, there's a lot more to say about the difference between keeping coal, oil, and gas in the ground, keeping carbon in the ground versus removing it, but that would be for another video. Hope this was helpful. Of course, you can go and uh, check out this scenario or your own scenarios at enroads.org. I'm going to grab this scenario here, copy this scenario link to share with people um, myself, and um, hope you can use this to make a difference.